So what is the difference between a polar covalent bond and a nonpolar covalent bond? Well, first, you need to know what is a covalent bond and how it differs from an ionic bond. In a covalent bond, electrons are shared. So let's look at the example between uh, two hydrogen atoms. When two hydrogen atoms combine, they get together and they form a covalent bond, which looks like this. So the covalent bond represents a sharing of electrons. Now, when sodium metal reacts with chlorine gas, or let's just say an atom of chlorine, notice what happens. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, sodium has one. So sodium transfers one of its electrons to chlorine. And so the sodium, the sodium particle develops a positive charge, so it becomes an ion, specifically a cation. Cations are positively charged. And chlorine, which now has eight electrons in its outermost energy level, now has a negative charge. And so these two ions are attracted to each other. Opposite charges attract each other. So there is an electrostatic force that pulls them together. And so that creates the ionic bond. So ionic bonds are formed through the transfer of electrons. And ionic bonds, they're based on the electrostatic forces that pull positive and negative ions together. Whereas in a covalent bond, the electrons are shared between two atoms. So now that we know what a covalent bond is, we could talk about what's a polar covalent bond and a non-polar covalent bond. So let's use HF and HH as an example. Hydrogen gas is a nonpolar molecule. So the bond is nonpolar. HF has a polar bond. Now, both of these bonds are covalent because electrons are being shared. However, in a nonpolar covalent bond, you have equal sharing of electrons. The reason why the sharing is equal because these two atoms are equivalent. They're the same. They have the same electronegativity value, which is 2.1. In HF, the electronegativity value is not the same. Fluorine is 4.0 and hydrogen is 2.1. So the difference is huge. And so what we have is a polar covalent bond. The reason why it's a polar covalent bond is because you have unequal sharing of electrons. Because fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, fluorine is going to pull the electrons toward itself. And so the electrons in HF, they're going to spend more time closer to fluorine than to hydrogen. And as a result, fluorine is going to have a partial negative charge and hydrogen is going to have a partial positive charge. And whenever you have a molecule where one side is partially positive and the other side is partially negative, what you have is a polar molecule. This is a polarized object. And so the HF bond is a polar covalent bond. It causes the molecule to be polar. When you have a nonpolar bond, the electrons are distributed evenly. In a polar bond, one side has more electrons, the other side has less. So you have an unequal distribution of electrons. Now, you can characterize bonds based on the electronegativity difference between the atoms. So, for example, if you have a nonpolar bond, the electronegativity difference is typically between 0 and 0.4. Now, for a polar covalent bond, the electronegativity difference is about 0.5 to about 1.9 at most. And for an ionic bond, it's usually 1.9 and more. So let's just say greater than 1.9, just to keep it simple. And if it's nonpolar, you could say it's less than 
Now, the best way to distinguish an ionic bond is to look for two things. One, is it composed of ions, positive and negative charges? Two, is it composed of a metal and a nonmetal? That's the easiest way to distinguish an ionic bond. And then to distinguish a polar covalent bond from a nonpolar covalent bond, just look at the, the electronegativity values. If the difference is 0.5 or more, then it's going to be a polar covalent bond. And covalent bonds are typically composed of nonmetals. So if you see two nonmetals attached to each other, it's usually a covalent bond. If you have a metal and a nonmetal, it's usually an ionic bond. Let's work on these problems. Identify the following bonds as ionic, polar covalent, or nonpolar covalent. So feel free to work on this example. So let's start with the chlorine molecule. The bond in this molecule, how would you describe it? Now, if you have two nonmetals, it's going to be a covalent bond. Chlorine is a nonmetal. And if these nonmetals are the same, automatically you know it's going to be a nonpolar covalent bond. Now, let's look at the carbon hydrogen bond. Carbon is a nonmetal, and hydrogen is a nonmetal. So the fact that we have two nonmetals is a good indication that what we have is a covalent bond. Now, to determine if it's polar or nonpolar because the elements are different, we need to look at the electronegativity values. Carbon has an En value of 2.5, and the electronegativity value of hydrogen is 2.1. So the difference between 2.5 and 2.1, if you subtract them, you should get 0.4, which means that the carbon-hydrogen bond is a nonpolar covalent bond. Now let's look at carbon and oxygen, both of which are nonmetals. So we know it's going to be a covalent bond. Oxygen has an electronegativity value of 2.5. I mean, that's carbon, but oxygen is 3.5. So the electronegativity difference between these two atoms, 3.5 minus 2.5 is 1.0. So 1.0 is greater than 0.5. So what we have here is a polar covalent bond as opposed to a nonpolar covalent bond. Now, looking at the, the last example, sodium fluoride. Sodium is a metal. Fluorine is a nonmetal. So just by looking at that, that's a good indication that what we have is an ionic bond. Now, let's confirm it with the electronegativity values. Sodium has an En value of 0.9, and uh, fluorine is 4.0. So the electronegativity difference between these two elements is 4 minus 0.9, which is 3.1. So this is definitely an ionic bond. It exceeds the 1.9 value for ionic bonds. Number two, which of the following bonds is most polar? Is it the nitrogen-fluorine bond? Is it the phosphorus-fluorine bond? Or the arsenic-fluorine bond? Now granted, if we have access to the electronegativity table, we can easily find the answer. But how can you find it without using the EN values? What you need to do is look at the elements on the periodic table. We have nitrogen, below that is phosphorus, and then arsenic. And here's fluorine. This is oxygen, and this is carbon's going to be over here. Now, when two elements are very close to each other on a periodic table, the electronegativity difference will be small. So it's not going to be very polar. But when they're far apart, the electronegativity difference will be large, and it's going to be polar. So nitrogen is closest to fluorine. So therefore, the nitrogen-fluorine bond is going to be the least polar. Arsenic is very far away from fluorine, so we should expect that the arsenic-fluorine bond will be the most polar, and so this is going to be the answer. And that's how you can tell. Just look at the elements, see which two elements are far apart as possible. That's going to be the bond that's most polar. Now, this will only work if 
one element remains the same in each of the choices you're given. If not, you need to look at the electronegativity values. So now let's look at the last example. So here's carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So we're comparing CF with NF and OF. So oxygen is closest to fluorine. So therefore, the OF bond is going to be the least polar. Carbon is furthest away from fluorine. So the CF bond is going to be the most polar. So therefore, this is the answer. But let's confirm it. So looking at the OF bond, oxygen has an electronegativity value of 3.5, and for fluorine is 4.0. So the EN difference for the OF bond is only 0.5, which means it's a polar covalent bond. Now nitrogen has an electronegativity value of 3.0, and comparing that to fluorine, that's a difference of 1.0. So the nitrogen-fluorine bond is also polar. So that's another polar covalent bond. Carbon is 2.5. So the difference between these two values is 1.5. So as we can see, the carbon-fluorine bond is the most polar bond compared to the other options that are listed here. But you don't need the EN values to figure this out. Just look for the two elements that are very far apart, and that's going to be the bond that is most polar.